Got a point down here. There you go. Nice. Nice. There you go. Nice shot. Got crazy action. Birds flying everywhere. Quail friends. First things I wanted to show Harley was what a valley quail hunt in Idaho was all about. So what's our plan here, Bob? It's fairly high sagebrush, usually on a creek bottom, and I had a spot right out of town where I do a lot of training, a little private place, so we went out and just did a, did a quail hunt there. The first two dogs I grabbed were my go-to dogs, Tucker and Zoe. The first thing that Bob wanted to show me with his dogs and what he does with his puppies and what ex he exposes his dogs to are valley quail. And I have a lot of experience with valley quail. Whoa. Can you hit this bird? Maybe. I'll flush it down the creek. Where's, his, where's Tucker? I don't know. He's up there. Nice shot. Good girl. Come. Good. I wanted to show Harley kind of the, the top end of what I own. Valley quail present a great opportunity for the dogs. And the reason that is is that they'll run, but they'll home quite well. So they give the dog a lot of different places to find them and a lot of opportunities. The flip side of that is, is that the gunners usually have a tough time putting them down. Oh, hey, stop! <laughs> they fly like crazy all over the place. They'll come out to your left, they'll come out to your right, they'll come out behind you. And they'll typically fly right between your buddy hunting. Oh, they know where to fly, don't they? Tucker, whoa, whoa. Yes. Ugh. All right. Take it to the guy that's carrying all the birds, okay? Good dog. Man, my pack is light. How's your pack, Bob? Heavy? Mine's getting heavy. From all the birds you shot. All the birds I shot. Hard to take the eyes off the dogs. That was fast and furious, that Bob. Was, it's fun, quail hunting is fun. Yeah, that's a nice spot. This is typical. Quail country in Idaho, right? I, Idaho has valley quail galore. Yeah. Very few guys hunt them. They get a lot of dogs, get a lot of work. These dogs did really well. We saw some pointing, some excellent retrieving, and a lot of wild flushes, kind of yeah. short, stubbly yeah. stuff yeah. in here. Yeah, but we're, we're losing our light. Should we go give the dog some water? Yeah, I think we're about done here. Take a rest. Put it again tomorrow. That was fun. Thanks, sir. You betcha. You betcha. Let's go do it. One of the cool things is getting to go to Bob's house. He has a proven method from puppy to experienced gun dog, and that comes from being a good breeder and a very knowledgeable hunter. They get about six weeks, and I usually kind of take over, and I start putting birds in front of the puppies and start seeing what I see. I used to train gun dogs, uh, kind of the old school, where you'd teach them whoa, and you'd enforce whoa as you hunted. I still do as far as the NAVDA tests or any field trialing that I might do. Probably the biggest part of my success is placing the right puppy with the right person. It's always fun to see people's 
techniques and plans they have, especially breeders. And breeders that hunt are different, a lot of times different than just breeders. This guy produces gun dogs for people. He wants them to go to hunters and, and to people that are passionate about their dogs and about their hunting. So it's fun to see the processes and I had him take me through the whole process from puppies and we got to see some two to three week old puppies. Then I got to see what he goes through to the little more, more mature puppy, the four month old puppy. I got to see how he puts it on a check cord and runs it on pigeons and launches it. The first thing you really have to do is you got to create prey drive. Right. And until the prey drive is there, a dog, the intensity on points not there, the prey drive is what creates retrieving, hard, intense pointing, and it's basically learning to search. We got Hammy and who? Tuck. Hemi and Tucker, and then we got then we got Hazel and Izzy. I really wanted to see the versatility of the dog. I wanted to see what they do on pheasants in the cover that pheasants live in in Idaho, which is extremely thick stuff. One bird gets up, they all get up. Yeah. You know, and so, but after, it's kind of like hunting quail. Once you've busted them, yeah. then you go hunt them. Go find them. Pheasant hunting in Idaho is a lot harder than probably anywhere I've hunted, and I've hunted a lot of states and especially from November on. All the crops are gone, all the birds are hovered in to the river bottoms, and it's, it's all thick cover. Uh, it's slow hunting because you're just crawling over stuff, it's, but it's, when you score, it's the best bird of the year. And go through that sorghum field or whatever it is. The cover's so thick here, and I've seen cover like this in the Midwest. This is particularly nasty. I mean, you're dealing with some super thick, hard to get through stuff, and a lot of times you couldn't even see the dog, but what you can see are the tules or the cattails moving or the willows moving. Bird in there, bird in there. Hey, 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 hey. I crested over that, over that knob, and I could see Tucker break down, go through some open country. We got a point down here. Oh, there he goes, there he goes. Nice, nice and I, I could tell by his tail and his body language he was tracking a bird. Right on top of the cliff. Fetch it, fetch it, fetch it, fetch it, fetch it, fetch it. The drive took him up over, made an awesome retrieve on a super long-tailed, big spurred rooster. It was a very, very cool bird hunting situation. Good boy. It looked like a dead rooster. You got what you got, buddy. Yeah. Got one to stick, huh? I stuck one, nice, buddy. buddy. Nice. Where'd well, you get it? Dog was on point right in uh -huh. here. I, I could just see his back. I could see his orange collar. Uh -huh. I knew I knew it was going to be an old swamp rooster. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just pinned down here in the very bottom. Tipped it up over the cliff. Yeah, I saw the bird go down on the cliff, or just on top of the cliff. And one bird like this. Yeah, one bird like that. That makes the season. Well, there were a bunch that were popping out ahead of us yeah. out there. Well, we'll go, we'll go press on up around now and push after those. Continue on. Yeah. Good job, Good boy, Tuck. Tucker. Part of the challenge of hunting pheasants and valley quail is the terrain, and it changes so much here. You know, you can go from hunting the edge of a cornfield into to sagebrush, into a creek bottom with thickets in it, and so you have to really be aware of what your dog's doing and where you're at to set yourself up for the shot. There you go. Nice shot. Nice shot. Thank you. Got greedy with the double there, but. You also have to be keen to what's coming out. Again, in this terrain, in this part of the country, you really don't know what's gonna come out. Here I am carrying his birds. Did you get that second one? Yeah, and the diversity of birds that we have here. You, when you hunt these river bottoms, when your dog is on point, you're expecting a rooster, it may be a quail. Point. Nice shot, Bob. Wild flusher. Well, quail get all split up. Go all different ways. Good girl, Hazel. That's my baby. That's yeah. nice, very nice. Hey, come. Come. Nice. Come, all right. Good deal. Finally. Hard, yeah, to, hard to find yeah. them in that thick stuff. Good dog. Nice. 
what really made this hunt fun was watching the talents of these dogs and watching how much fun Bob had running his dogs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, ah. That one's running. Mine's going to run right here. There's a mark on him. Told you there were birds right down in here somewhere, boys. You were right. Dead bird, dead bird, dead bird, dead bird, dead bird. Dead bird. Fetch it up. Good. Good Atta dog. Howdy, girl, Izzy. Howdy, girl, Izzy. Good. Come to Papa. Good girl. One thing that's a little bit different that Bob uses with the e-collars is, uh, is a vibration mode on the e-collar to reward good behavior. And he also uses a traditional little nick for disciplining. But I thought it was cool because that's, a, that's an instant response that he gives the dog for doing good behavior. But when it comes to hunting, I really take more of an instinctive approach with the dog. I like, I like to just teach the dog to whoa to a whistle and, and to turn and come back to a whistle. And I don't like to give any verbal commands when I hunt. Everybody has a different way of handling their dogs in the field too. And Bob has a, a method of, of very few verbal commands. He uses a whistle to make his dog stop. He uses the e-collar to make him come back a lot, and it's very quiet. He hunts a lot of birds that you have to be quiet around, and I'm a big fan of that. I just don't want to be in the field and be hollering at a dog. I don't want him to be using my voice at all. You open your mouth when you're hunting, and you're going to have birds flushing all over the place. So. I, I take my hunting pretty seriously. I hunt pretty hard and I hunt a lot and I, it's, it's kind of the passion that I, that I have it within me. And Bob set his dogs up to really showcase their versatility and their talents. I mean, it goes from valley quail, pointing valley quail in the sagebrush to busting birds out of super nasty swamps for pheasants to hunting ducks to hunting chuckers to hunting grouse. And he's really allowed his dogs to feature and showcase their talents and their versatility. I realize that he's turned